Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today, we have the chance to check in with Trail Life USA, learn about this organization and the, uh, the opportunities they uh, present for boys, young men across the country. Joining us today is Mark Hancock, the CEO for Trail Life USA. Mark, thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. Thank you, Andy and Sarah. It's great to be here. Mark, share with us, uh, what is Trail Life USA? Trail Life USA is a Christ-centered, boy-focused character leadership and adventure organization for boys from kindergarten through 12th grade. As you can imagine, being an, an outdoor adventure organization, we have things like troops and patrols and handbooks and uniforms and awards. We've been around about five years and we have uh, 30,000 members in all 50 states. So then what are, what are some of the, the things that Trail Life uh, participants get to do in their troops? Well, that's a great question. It's, every, it's the things that you would expect, and it varies, of course, uh, geographically, but for the most part, we're an outdoors organization. So you're going to see hiking and camping and whitewater rafting or zip lining and bouldering, all those things. But it's all in a Christian context, uh, surrounded by Christian leaders who are vetted, background checked. Uh, we, like I said, we're a Christ-centered program. So at our core, we're a ministry, uh, but we use the outdoors to 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 bring boys in and to, to show them lessons of our of our creator in the outdoors. What are some of the the biggest challenges that are facing boys today? Well, you know, particularly in this time right now, in this pandemic that we're in, you know, boys are uh, really being uh, restricted. And and overall, the culture has been something that we call a war on boyhood uh, for for a number of years now. And basically it's led to things like, you know, boys are now twice as likely to be special education, three times more likely uh, to be uh, to have challenges uh, to be declared uh, ADHD. Um, boys uh, fall behind girls in every single academic category, all of them, fewer of them going to college, fewer of them getting master's degrees, fewer of them getting doctoral degrees, suicide rates. Right? Boys are lagging in every single category. And of course, we think girls are great, but I think that in a culture that's been been uh, talking about things like toxic masculinity and, and dismissing some of the things that we used to value about masculinity, um, then, I, then, then boys are really getting the short end of that, of that stick. And so uh, Trail Life USA is boy focused. Uh, we're designed for boys. There's great girl programs like American Heritage Girls. I know LCMS churches have uh, work, a lot of them work with American Heritage Girls troops. So we think there's great programs for girls and Trail Life was developed to be specifically boy focused. So we've talked about the challenges that, that boys face today, particularly in our world, in our society, um, and, and those being some of the, the, the bad challenges. What are good challenges? In what ways should we challenge boys today? Well, boys are always up for a challenge, and we tend to forget that from them. I, I think that that we as a culture are under-challenging boys right now. And I, you remember, it, I, if, if you've worked with young boys at all, I remember that I that I did all through Sunday school and working with them in ministry for years and years. If you got two boys that come up to you, maybe they're five and six years old, and they ask you if they can go get a drink of water, and you say yes— well, it's like you fought, fired a starting gun. I mean, those boys are automatically in a competition. They are off running to that water fountain. Boys are naturally competitive, and we've taken a lot of that out of our culture. And so in Trail Life USA, we restore some of that competition, the healthy competition, uh, by giving them awards to, to achieve. Uh, they, they don't get awards for, for participation trophies. They're getting awards for things that they achieve. And boys thrive in that environment. You know, in our in our schools, in, in our culture today, because we removed a lot of that opportunity for them to really be challenged and to compete for things, we've driven them indoors to video games where they do get to compete and they get points and they get awards and they get levels and they progress. So we drive them indoors to video games, to that environment that they love. And then we criticize them for playing so many video games. So it seems like boys can't win uh, anywhere. But if we if we recognize their healthy challenges and we respond to them and we put in front of them opportunities for growth, then boys really su- uh, excel and they and they become the type of winning men who uh, who can uh, build and encourage culture. So how do the outdoors and physical activities play a role in the ways that Trail Life USA challenges boys today? Well, the outdoors is a great level playing field, and it's like a laboratory for learning. You know, in today's world, it's hard, It's so hard for dads and for adult leaders to connect with boys because 
the technology advances so quickly. It's impossible for us to spend the amount of time that they do in keeping up with the things that they're following after. But the outdoors levels the playing field. So we end up with good, strong Christian men in the outdoors with boys and they're learning together, and the adults uh, generally have us have a jump on the boys because they know they know that environment better than boys do. So we've kind of restored that place where the adult and the grown up and the man is the one to be followed after and to listen, and and the one who who knows the environment better. And so in that place, we're seeing great relationships develop between boys and their dads between boys and good, strong male mentors, as again, that right relationship is being restored, that the person with the wisdom, the person with the experience, the person with the knowledge, the person who's been there before is the person who's leading. And we just think that that's really powerful for boys because they can rest now because they're in a place where the adults know more than they do about the environment. And that's, uh, uh, sadly, that's sort of a unique thing in our in our uh, technological culture. What difference does that make for boys as they're growing up uh, to have a strong relationship with their dads and with male, uh, older male mentors? Well, if, if you look at surveys and you look at what's going on with boys, it makes all the difference in the world. When you look at the factors that contribute to poverty, to uh, teen suicide, to teen pregnancies, to drug, to drug abuse, to crime, when you look at all of those things, then the defining factor or the like factor is the fatherlessness. And what we do in trail life, one, we provide a place where fathers can connect with their son in a ways that they're not, not doing anywhere else. But then we also be, provide father likes because there's so many boys in our culture who don't have a father. It's record numbers of boys who are fatherless. There's not a man in the home. And so a single moms are loving trail life because they know intuitively that their sons need a man to follow after. And they're putting them in trail life. We have uh, men who are criminal background checked. They're a child safety youth protection trained. There's personal references. Uh, they sign a statement of faith, a statement of values. Uh, they agree with our values. Uh, and, and they're the ones who are providing this sort of mentorship and discipleship for boys. And when a boy can look to a man, that makes all the difference. The statistics tell us that. When the pandemic began months ago, that closed many schools, at least school buildings, everything moved to virtual and a lot of education and other activities moved to uh, connecting virtually. How has trail life remained active during this time of pandemic? Well, as you can imagine, in an outdoor adventure organization, our folks are resourceful. And almost immediately, our, our, our troops began to adjust in the, in the 800 and something churches across the country to figure out how they could continue to meet. And they started with Zoom until things began to, to settle and we began to get some, some ideas. The troops began to get ideas on their own of how it is they could meet safely. And so a lot of our, our, our troops uh, uh, continue to find ways to meet. Of course, the outdoors is the safest place to be. So uh, our, we're primarily an outdoor <laughs> organization. So boys are continuing to progress in it. And even though sports are shut down and so many other opportunities for boys to, to, uh, to express their physicality and their athleticism and to grow and to, to burn off some, some steam, to blow off some steam, um, trail life is still active. In fact, what we say is that we're open for adventure and troops across the country are meeting on a regular basis. They're doing these outdoor activities because the outdoors is the safest place to be. Do you have any stories of, of impact uh, that, uh, from, from some of the, the boys in troops across the nation? Oh my gosh, hundreds of them. Uh, one that comes to mind is a young man in North Carolina <laughs> who uh, his, uh, his uh, father, under horrible circumstances, was suddenly out of the home and left the, the single mom, now a single mom, having to support her family of, of five, four boys and a girl uh, after having been out of the workforce and everything for years. Well, that trail life troop in that area heard about this family and, and stepped up and bought the boys uniforms, got them all involved in trail life. And this young man, 17 years old, who was suddenly the father figures, who was the, the, the oldest male in that household, all of this was kind of thrust on him. Well, they got into trail life. One of the first things they did was a 50 mile hike uh, up a mountain. And uh, he tells the story about how the first day he, he thought he was going to die. And the second day he wanted to. And the third day he almost <laughs> quit. And on the fourth day he saw the summit. And on the fifth day he stood on it. And he went home and he told his mom, mom, mom that was the hardest thing I've ever done. But you know what? I did it. And you know what? That's 
solid gold for a mom, for a single mom who's trying to, to get her kids through a difficult time, for them to encounter something challenge, uh, to have people alongside to help walk them through it and encourage them in it and get them through something difficult. That's just huge. That's a lesson uh, he'll be able to lean on for the rest of his life. And of course, we see that repeated over and over and over again. Another single mom story, I was in Virginia around a campfire and a mother came up and said, I have to tell you my story. She said, my husband died 10 years ago. And she says, uh, he left me with my two-year-old son. She said, I cried out to God for men that would help raise my son when he really needed them. And now he's 12 years old. He's a navigator in Trail F USA, surrounded by godly good men who care about him. And my husband would want me to thank you. I mean, isn't that powerful? And who knows how many times that's repeated over and over again that Trail Life is providing this opportunity for young men to be challenged uh, to, instead of being told that they can't do things, instead of being told you can't go outside, you can't gather, you can't do this, you can't do that, they're being, being told, hey, listen, you can do this. It's hard. It's hard. But if you work at it, you'll succeed. And that is a lesson that our boys need for their entire lives. It's hard, but you can do it. Hard things can be good. That's a <laughs> common uh, <laughs> phrase in our household. Hard, hard things can be good. And uh, thankful to hear that. How can we learn more about Trail Life USA? Find a troop in our area. Well, you go to traillifeusa.com, traillifeusa.com, two L's in the middle. And there's, I think it's, uh, the tab is Get Connected. And you can find something called Find a Troop. And it's an interactive uh, map of the United States. You put in your zip code and it will pop up uh, troops in your area, depending on how far you want to drive. And then you can click on connect with that troop. And somebody from that troop will contact you, give you the details about, about how you can become part of that troop. If you don't find a troop in your area, in that same place is the opportunity to start a troop. And of course, is there, we've got LCMS churches all across the country that are chartering uh, troops. It takes five adults. We consider ourselves an outreach of that local church so that that local church owns the program and directs the program, handles the theology, the direction, the teaching, any of that stuff is owned by that local church. And uh, But there's five adults, uh, from, most of them from inside the church. Sometimes they reach out in the community and find uh, adults to help get a troop started. So you can find a troop there or you can learn how to start one. Our guest today, Mark Hancock, CEO of Trail Life USA. You can find more at traillifeusa.com. Mark, thanks so much for being our guest on The Coffee Hour today. Thank you, Andy and Sarah. Appreciate you guys. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Goldseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.